Hello everyone and welcome to the show. My name is Yuri Now, whether we like to admit it or not, show business is cutthroat and it places a premium on how you look. Our spotlight today is on two women who continue to break all stereotypes. They're big, bold, sassy, and continue to dominate and hold their own in a male-dominated area. My first taste of this individual was as a voice note that went viral at the time. Today, she is probably one of the most visible female comedians that this nation has produced. We bring you up close and personal with Chigo. My name is Chioma Umerwa, aka Chi Girl, and I'm a singer, songwriter, actress, and all round entertainer. I went to school in Lagos, primary school in Lagos. Secondary school in Lagos, or part in Jos, and then he came back to Lagos after issues. Um, and then I went to the US for 12 years, and um, I did university there. Of course, I went to Abia State University for like a hot three months. Didn't learn much, but after that, I went to the US, and then I was there for 12 years, and then I moved back here in 2006. I don't think education was my thing, I don't think it is my thing. I think it was one of those things that I saw as a necessity because especially because someone else was paying your fees, you go and learn what they said you should learn, and you finish, and you have a degree or something to fall back on if your career choice doesn't work out. I finally decided to study French education um, after two years of criminal justice not working and failing. And uh, I taught high school for four years after that, three, four years, because I was volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club after school programs. and then. I decided to teach high school, which was a whole other experience by itself. Um, surreal, because this is me, Nigerian, teaching American kids French. Ah! Excuse me, so good, so mad. Yeah. As an actor, you create characters and you're able to be a character. And Chiga is one of those characters I'm able to be at a certain time. So Chiga is one of the characters that I created, because there are many more. It's just she goes just I say she's the one with the most money right now, so she's the one in the forefront. But I do other things and I sing jazz and I I, I am an actor and I create characters, I do voiceover. So it's and it's fun for me because this is all part of what makes me me. Those are the quirky things I do. It's just that somebody somewhere listened to it and sent it off to somebody and that's how it went viral with the voice notes and here we are today. What you gonna buy? I just love to sing, it's one of my passions, um, after acting. And uh, I like to sing jazz because that genre appeals to me, it's especially old school. I mean, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, uh, Nat King Cole, that whole genre. And I love it so much because it allows me to escape from my regular, you know, and, and it's not even about doing an album. Like, it's about just me, a piano, maybe a drums, just doing something nice and with a nice crowd, your lights down low, very grown folk type situation. And that's just what I love to do. And, and, and then being able to add that to my, to my repertoire of things that I do. So it's, it's I want to be like a one woman show. I said, y'all always say wow to me. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, wow. You know you always gonna blow my head. As I listen to the word you say. Y'all always say wow to me. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, man. You know you always gonna blow my head.
always sort of like been an issue for me, which is we're working on it. Um, but in my own head, I always felt like you're going to be in front of the camera. When Chigo was a voice, it was fine. When Chigo became a face and a body, it became uh, ishumatic, for lack of a better word, because I was now like social media, Instagram, all these things. People see you, people fat shame you, they talk about you, they call your kinds of names, you know, they talk about your arms. So, and I, I wasn't used to that. And I said to myself, Ugh. like, I'm not, I'm not used to this. And, but then there was so much love as well. So you found a way to sort of like temper the love with the, with the ugliness and work with the love and get the support. So now I delete comments I don't like. I tell people off. If you don't like it, try Christ, Flix, or Huggy Transformer or two. Help yourself. There's nothing I can do. I'm working on myself right now because at the end of the day, I'm doing this for me. It's not about anybody else. So we're works in progress. We're not there yet, but we are working on getting ourselves to that place. Um, it's not as, as easy as people think it is. You know, just, oh, I can be a size 12. No, I want to be a size 12, but I'm not right now. But she girl just happens to be loving and boxably and a lot more to hug. And I, I give very good hugs and people like it. Hello. With regards to my size, well, size in general and talent and whether it matters or not, well, it is what it is because the harsh reality is that it does matter because of people spending money to put you on, on billboards and on, in adverts and all of those things. But yes, people miss out on the good things about, about talent because you don't get to see what someone has to offer because you're just worried about what they look like. We can't all be size twos. Um, we can't all be Tiwa Savage and Shay Shay. We love to be, but we can't. At the end of the day, size does should not matter, but it does. But that's the reality of the life we live. <music> Style is comfort. Shoes that have the heel off, so you're pretty much walking on metal. And that kill, 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 kill sound. Oh, oh, oh. Some people, I think it adds to their own repertoire. So it's like, the sound is telling me I'm coming. So you're now kiwi, 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 everywhere. Uh, no, fix it. Take it one lamb. There are plenty. Find it. Fix your shoe. Wearing a belly shirt that, that, that shows more than one belly, which is just not a, a, acceptable. Slippers. Why are you not supposed to wear slippers? Some people just feel like they can wear slippers. Why? And it's not even slippers. Slippers. Don't look. Why? <laughs> really? <laughs> Help yourself. What's my fashion? Um, my fashion can do without nothing. I, there's nothing. I would rather not be dressed up and all dolled up and going anywhere. I would just like to be left alone and wear my jeans and my t-shirt, no makeup on, have let my hair out and just go out and not be talked about. I think the contemporary Nigerian woman is, is resilient and can make it anywhere, but is she given the chance to? I don't think so. On, and I'm just speaking from maybe my own experience in the entertainment sector. bundle of talent. Now our next feature is on another individual who continues to hold her own in the comedy industry. She's a household name and she's been playing this trade for many, 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 many years. She's also fought and won many personal battles. She makes for an interesting story. Enjoy. Bosede Olufunke Oseyemi Ogunboye. And um, 
I'm popularly known as the Quashia's boss. <laughs> I'm a comedian, actress, I'm an entertainer. I studied um, theater arts, University of Ibadan. Then I went back and studied law, the same University of Ibadan, after which I went to the Nigerian Law School Abuja. I was called to bar in the year 2001. <laughs> like I always say, comedy kind of chose me. I didn't choose comedy. Uh, from when I was in UAE, there was a group called the Fomania Organization. It's a stopstick studio kind of thing. You just do skits and sketches, like Saturday Night Live on stage. And um, my brother used to be the anchor person. I just acted. And then my brother graduated and they needed an anchor person and they came to call me and I was like, how? Is there a script? They said, no, you just talk from your head. How am I supposed to do that? They said, ah, you're a feminist sister, right? I said, yes, the same father, the same mother. I said, yes, they don't worry, you do fine. And, <laughs> and that was how I got on stage the first night. And everything was beautiful. I was high, I was like, this is it, you know? And I couldn't wait for the next one and the next one and the next one. And after a while, the, the school kind of took notice. Way back then, I didn't even know I was building a career. I didn't know it was a career. I, I was just having fun. It was until I came to Lagos that I knew that, oh, there's a career called comedy. <laughs> people are making money out of this. And there's a structure that people are doing this for a living. It's not just one of the things they are doing, but this is what some people do, and this is what some people live on. And then I, I, I have to start looking deeply into it. But I also realized that if people feel that you're just coming on stage to just talk, you're just coming as a person, and it's only you, and it's all about you alone, they tend not to respect what we do for a living. It's like when people ask us as comedians, uh, MCs, uh, how much do you charge to anchor a wedding and you call your fee, they look at you like, just to stand and hold a mic and talk. What's that? They don't realize that you put a lot of work into this person because this brand took a while to build up. Um, every word that comes out of your mouth is as a result of either reading or studying or watching. And so you, 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 it's a lot of work. You're not just that one person because you have your PA, you have your manager, you have an office to maintain, but people just see that one person and so they judge you based on that one person and they can't understand why you're charging as much as you do. The average Nigerian talent is grouping in the dark. You, you, you're talented, but you just don't know what to do. And you're so desperate for relevance to be seen that structure is nothing at that point. You would rather do everything for free you just want to be seen, you just want to be recognized. So you, you tend to take anything. And when you begin to get established and you start putting those structures in place, then people say you're becoming proud and you're becoming a diva and you're becoming this and you're becoming that. But that's just how it is here. I find out that 60 to 70% of so-called managers in the industry <laughs> are managers because... Um, their sister is a star, and their sister says, she's my manager, or he's my manager. But they have no clue <laughs> of how to make somebody else a star, because there's no structure. We are, we are giving jobs based on our recognition, and we are paying man managers for it. We need to get to the point where like, the, all these wonderful business schools can start teaching as a matter of fact, the business angle of show business, because there is a business angle to it. They, they, it, it it's much more than talent, and it's much more than prayer, and it's much more than grace, and it's much more than connections. I keep saying to um, a lot of young comedians that come to meet me, you don't tell me you graduated from the university and that's all you're doing, stand-up comedy. I can't, I, can't, I can't conceive it. I want to hear you say, I work at so, 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 and so, please. I'm working on my comedy as well. Because when you work in a structured env environment, you learn structure. And then you bring that into your comedy career, and then there can be structure. It's no longer about, about talent anymore. Um, I see a lot of um, young comedians as well who you would never see them on stage. They are not even in all these shows. And these guys are cashing in. 
these guys are making mega bucks because they know something about the business angle. They've learned to package themselves. They, they've learned to build a profile. They've learned to make a proper presentation. I come from the school where Instagram came. Hey, why would I want everybody to know what I'm eating for breakfast? Oh, why? How is it? You find out that now people use social media to get ahead. And the more, the more your followership, the more you build your brand. And so you find someone who has been in the industry for like donkey years having like 5,000 followers, and then somebody who just came in yesterday having like a million followers. It's, it has to do with the, the capacity to build information and to get people to know that you're busy and this is what you're doing. And so it's, um, it's, it's wider than just saying, I, I am a showbiz person. Besides being big, I think the biggest challenge I ever had was being a woman. I think it's African. A guy says something, and it's passable. And a female says the same thing, and it's an insult. Um, a whiskey sings a song all about a woman's body, and it sounds like a good song. And Yemi Aladdin sings the same song, and... She, and Women are offended. Why would she talk about the woman like that? Why would she make us sound like we are just a thing? But Whiskey said it and you danced. And that's how, that's how funny it is. So when I discovered that all comedians were buying sports car to prove to themselves that they have money, I decided to buy sports car. So I went to where they were selling the car. I said, Chukudi, I want a car. He showed me all the sports cars. I said, I want this one, two door. The man looked at me, looked at the car, looked at me, looked at the car, looked at me, and see, buy luxurious now your size. <laughs> My nephew looked at me and said, Auntie, they said we should sing a song about our favorite member of the family. I said, yes. He said, and you're my favorite auntie. I said, so what did you sing? He said, I sang, oh, mountain, you have to move, oh, mountain. I said, me, mountain. He said, no, it's a mistake. <laughs> so what did you sing? He said, I sang, H-I-P for the hip, eh? Wow. Me, hippopotamus. He said, no, it was a mistake. So what did you sing? Eh, I sang, Auntie Boss said, you are bigger than what people say. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't set out to make being big my, my brand. It was supposed to be the icebreaker. You know, I get on stage and then I crack something about being big and then I go to the other things I want to talk about. But I found out that I get more laughs from it, so I stuck with it. Another reason why I stuck with that was also because the guys in the industry, prior to when I got into the industry, had mega fat jokes. And I didn't like it, because it's funny when I am talking about my weight. It's fine. But when you talk about my weight, it becomes an insult. I, I, I kind of took it from them and made it mine. As at the time I was deciding to do, go on a weight loss, my career was the last thing on my mind. I was about to get to, the, to a very important age, and I'd been taking stock. And prior to that, a friend had died, and she just died, and that was it. She did, so it was, for me, it was a time for me to just assess my life. I realized that my life was about my weight. Um, everything, all the things, I had to do in life were based on my weight. My comedy was about my weight. Everything was about my weight. And I decided that it was time to make a change. I was making everybody else laugh, but I was a very sad person. I, I remember a particular day that I went and performed at an event, and it was fantastic. People were on their feet clapping, awesome. And I cried all the way from the event to the house while I was driving. I started looking for solutions. I started reading. I started doing a lot of reading, a lot of praying, a lot of spending time with myself. And I realized that the only solution was a total life change. So comedy wasn't funny anymore. That's the truth. Comedy wasn't funny anymore. I had to work hard at being funny. And it became a job. Before, it was a passion. It was it was pure joy to just stand on stage and talk. But now I have to 
walk it up. I have to call my friend Owen. I'm like, what, am, what am I going to say on stage now? <laughs> what's, what's going to happen now? Because I, I was losing it. Taking stock for me was, um, it was really intense because a lot of my friends didn't even know what was going on with me because I cut off a lot of people. I changed a lot of things because in that time that I was going through all that and I was taking all that stock, I also realized that a lot of things I did was because I wanted to please everybody else. Why? Yet again, because I was so fat and I didn't feel that I was special in myself. It was more important for me to understand how I got myself here in the first place. Your, your life starts and ends with this body. I mean, if you're just not happy with it, everything else will go wrong. I'm proud of the young Nigerian women. Um, every Nigerian woman in the past has been, we've been put in a box. When people succeed, they say they slept their way through it. They, they used their feminine powers. They used, but over time, women are evolving and women are doing stronger things and women are showing that um, we have a voice. We need to take time to mentor and not, not just be in our own space and feel that we have arrived and achieved, but we need to duplicate after ourselves. The more we do that, the better for us. This one that uh, the two of you are we are uh, and co. Are you going to party me? I don't want to have anything to do with you. Leave my wife on his own. Uh, which wife, who? Eh? Leave my wife alone. Leave my wife alone. You are not the same of yourself. You this man. It doesn't seem who know you. I agree with you. Yes, I agree with you that I don't, I don't even know her, yes? But I want to know her. Uh. This is the kind of woman I want to know in my life. I do not want to know anything about you. Leave this woman alone before I unleash my hand. Unleash what? Unleash my hand. Unleash what? Unleash anyone that can unleash. Me too, I will unleash my version on you. In fact, I want to unleash now. I want to unleash now. Sebi, you want to unleash? Be Sebi, you want to unleash? Be Come on, unleash. When I finish unleashing on you, I will unleash on her too. You are lucky that I haven't eaten. You are very, very lucky. Wait, let me cook for you. Wait, let me cook for you. Come now. Come, let me cook for you. You will eat before we beat you. Oh, Lord, you're not a buruku. Oh, yeah. Oh, smash, smash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I could do one thing to fix Nigeria, I think I would work on the power. I, it's, it's, it's life. I would never be called the fattest girl in the group ever again. <laughs> Three fashion tips. One, don't ever wear clothes that cling to your body and make you look funny. I mean, you've got bulging stomach and bulging this and bulging that and then the clothes are clinging and two wear what fits you not what is in vogue i am not a vogue person i people tell me you love jumpsuits a lot and i say yeah because they kind of tend to cover everything and everything is safe and secure you know and then it still makes you look chic so wear what works for you don't wear what works for everybody else and um, finally, always make sure that um, you ask somebody else what you look like before you leave the house. My personal philosophy of life is also based on the Bible. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. Now this nation is just brimming with amazing talent and on this show we are just only scratching the surface. Now if there's anything you like or you want to converse with us, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or log on to our website. Now I'm going to be here with another interesting episode of the show. Until then, look after yourselves and let's be kind to one another.